Fernie is a small mountain town located in the spectacular Elk Valley in the world famous Canadian Rocky Mountains of southeastern British Columbia. We'd like to acknowledge that Fernie is located in the traditional territory of the Tanaha Nation, which has history going back 10,000 years in this beautiful valley. The Grizz legend is a well-known tale to the citizens of Fernie, BC. It describes a man larger and broader than any man, dressed in bearskins and carrying a massive musket, which is the key to Fernie's legendary powder. In the midst of the cruel, bitter winter of 1879, a baby boy was born in a grizzly bear's cave high in the mountains above Fernie. The child grew strong in the harsh conditions, and when the resident grizzly bear awoke, a terrible battle ensued between the two, the courageous boy fighting for his life and the bear fighting for his dinner. The next day, the townspeople went into the mountains to try to discover the source of all the noise from the previous night. They looked high and low for signs of a struggle. One of the men thought he saw a young boy in a bear coat leaping from the lofty peaks. But the story was soon forgotten. Many years later, a group of intrepid ski tours were boot packing in the peaks of the Lizard Range in the midst of a heavy snowstorm. When they stopped for a breath, one of the men looked up at the peak that they were climbing. There on the very summit stood a fantastic sight. A man estimated 300 pounds was made to look even more awesome with his bristly grizzly coat. As the skiers watched, the man aimed his giant musket into the clouds and fired, causing blankets of snow to fall from the sky above. This delighted the skiers, who loved that special brand of powder snow. The skiers quickly skied down the mountain and excitedly told everyone their experience. Some of the town's elders remember the sighting of the little grizz boy from years long ago. And with the discovery of massive barefoot tracks upon the snow-topped peaks, the legend slowly took shape. Fernie's famous for all the snow and uh, it's pretty well known that the snow comes from the Grizz. I mean, the Grizz is the mountain man with the musket. Grizz makes it snow. Uh, <laughs> he's the, the half man, half bear, half, uh, half wolf. Wait, what is it? Short, stout man of shoulders of six feet wide and he, uh, you know, he grew up with a, a family of grizzlies and grizzly bears in the mountains. If there's any clouds, he can shoot powder. Crusty old trapper with a gun that shoots powder. Bearded little trapper dude, you know, with snowshoes and mucklucks. I like the, I like the idea. But you know, it's, it's a great little mythical creature like the Sasquatch or the unicorn, you know, and people believe it to a certain extent. There has to be something special because this small little valley shouldn't get as much snow as it does. In recognition and admiration of the man who became known as Grizz, the townspeople held the festival all week. Sporting events, competitions, parades, and gatherings marked the legend. What started as Winter Festival, held at Fernie Snow Valley, later became Grizz Days in 1979. Usually held in the first weekend of March, Grizz Days has become a long-standing Fernie tradition for decades. The first Grizz Days was a two-week-long festival. It was incredibly rowdy, and there was not nearly as family-oriented. As Fernie's first Grizz, uh, when I used to uh, ski here, and that's all I did here was ski here at that time, Winter Carnival they had, had had for years, was starting to lose interest for everybody. So they invented the Grizz Contest. Six or eight local men would be selected to compete through an unending list of events and challenges to win over the votes of the panel of female judges. The competition involved beard growing, ax throwing, tall tail telling, beer guzzling, ski racing, snowshoe racing, and much, much more. 
It was also a pretty heavy drinking event, according to some of Fernie's past grizzes. Frankly, things got well out of control because there was limited rules. It was just a wide open letter rip. You know, they went off famously and partying for a week. So it was, uh, it was a free for all really. And it was a lot of fun. And everyone had their Grizz regalia on. And uh, the crown was a coonskin hat. You know, folklore about the Grizz and how he brings the snow. And the more people think about that and believe in it and celebrate it, the better it is. One year, the, uh, we're again sitting in the Fernie Hotel, Grizz Day's afternoon. And see this bunch of rowdy guys break in with their black powder rifles and want to kidnap the, one of the waitresses and take a big sack of money that had a big dollar sign on it. <laughs> it was a nice prop. <laughs> anyway, and they, and they were, you know, were the something the Dalton gang or whoever they were, and, uh, and you don't mess with us. And the one gentleman aimed his rifle up to the ceiling and fired it off and yeah there's no ammo in there but there's a blast from the rifle T took out the false ceiling tile and actually put a hole in the tile and uh, the tile started smoldering and filling up the place with smoke <laughs> um, so immediately three or four gentlemen from the surrounding tables grabbed their glasses of beer and threw it up on the tile and dr drenched the tile and put out the fire and the guy says, oh yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, okay, so we're the Dalton gang and don't mess with us and yeah, da, da, and out the door they go. And uh, <laughs> just without skipping a beat, <laughs> it was pretty funny. Outside though, the, the sheriff was waiting and they had a big shootout in the parking lot and everybody died. So, but it was, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Typical Grizz days. I used to run the dummy downhill as part of the Grizz days. And we started the dummy downhill because a lot of the events occurred downtown and we wanted something to bring the people up to the ski hill. I had seen the Dummy Downhill on a Warren Miller show, so I phoned the resort in Colorado that had held it and they sent me a lot of specs on it and the Dummy Downhill started at Fernie. And it was such a success that uh, of course it became part of Grizz Days. It was just such a fun event. I, I remember saying to someone, can you believe it? I'm getting paid to do this. It's so much fun. I remember Grizz Days as a little girl. So I remember the huge parades. They're, everybody loved the parades and they were throwing the candy on the ground. And we invited other towns like Kimberly and Cranbrook with their pipe bands and all that that came. And now we get all of our local bands here like Shred Kelly and so it's nice to see that. I like the, the nostalgia of Grizz days and the story behind the Grizz. I think there's always histories and stories behind everything and I think that's great. It keeps this town booming. Over the years, Grizz days has evolved but continues to be celebrated in a variety of ways. Although many original events still remain and there are now events for the whole family to enjoy. The annual Grizz competition is held during Grizz Days. It's a hard-fought battle of bellies, brains, and brawn, where the town's toughest take on a full day of challenges, starting with pancake eating, continuing to axe throwing, and then on to a variety of mountain-sized events. This is a true tribute to the Grizz. Happy Grizz Days. My name is uh, Dave O'Hare, and I was lucky enough to come to Fernie in 1970 when skiing was just about to take off and other industry was starting to climb. Person here was made, this is almost 30 years old. Uh, it was uh, one of the staff at the ski hill made Grizz a bunch of these. So those were a Winterfest type pin. And then it morphed into Grizz Days. So, and everybody embraced it. The chamber, the businesses, uh, we're all looking for a, a theme, you know. 2010, 
Vancouver Winter Olympics. Canada beats the USA in hockey, wins a gold medal, beats them in overtime. Grizz days are right after that. So I drive my hearse. I used to have this 71 Cadillac hearse, which was a gorgeous car. So I drove that car in the Grizz parade and I put a big sign on it that said RIP US Hockey. And everybody loved it. The crowd was cheering and it was it really went over incredibly well. And it made me feel really good because I kind of felt like a real Canadian. During the Grizz Days Festival, the Grizz's likeness is found on every furry lapel in town in support of the Grizz Days Pin Lottery. Each year, there is a different pin design to mark the year's celebration. These pins are purchased as a collector's item or as a chance to win $1,000 cash. The lottery is run by Fernie Rotary, supported by local businesses who sell the pins, with the proceeds going to local charities. And one of my favorite Grizz Days memories is just selling Grizz pins. You know, with the Rotary Club, uh, that's been our role for, uh, for a long time. And uh, you're getting out there just selling Grizz pins and some people are like, what's this? They've never been here before, they're here for a ski vacation and you tell them about, uh, tell them about the Grizz and tell them about Grizz Days and, uh, and all of a sudden they're part of it. They just arrived from somewhere else and now they're wearing a Grizz pin and that's the, they've become part of Fernie. Uh, to other people who are like, when are the Grizz, when are the Grizz pins going to be available, Randall? Because they, you know, every year they know it, they do it and obviously lots of folks have collections of it. I have my own collection of Grizz pins, but uh, that, uh, that interaction with people selling Grizz pins is just a ton of fun and it's uh, people enjoying themselves, people enjoying the snow and, uh, and our, uh, our celebration of, uh, of our community and, uh, and how important winter is to us. One of the highlights for me during Grizz days was four years ago. Now, when I became mayor, I wrote to Rick Mercer. I wrote to him twice, never heard back. But the chamber wrote to him. They never heard back. I think the day before, they were notified that they were coming. So I got an opportunity to speak with uh, Rick Mercer. He said, when I got the third invitation, I thought, we should go. But he loved the Grizz event. He loved Fernie. And he especially loved the dummy downhill the next day. He was nearly hit with one of the dummies. My favorite memory is when I was probably in grade three or four, I, I recall vividly there being a field by the Isabella Dickens Elementary School where a half day of really silly activities were organized. And watching the adults be goofy was, I just remember it like it was yesterday. They used to do this three or four person um, race where your, your feet are strapped to two by fours essentially and you're trying to work together to get to the end of the field. And, and seeing friends of my parents and my parents just goofing around, just such a vivid memory. I think one of the things that really sets resort ski towns apart from other municipalities is our festivals are often in the winter. And I think that's what makes us really hardcore. I mean, how many times have we had a Grizz Days parade where it's been moderate weather, almost never. And so it's either freezing cold and we've got young kids and, and hockey teams in the parade. And I, I just think it's what, what binds us as a ski town. It's just hanging out outside for four days, watching events and participating and, and the weather is almost irrelevant and I just love it all. Thank you for joining us for a look back at Fernie's unique winter festival over the decades. The Grizz Days is an integral part of the spirit and heritage of our small mountain community here in Fernie. Having touched thousands upon thousands of people over the years, we look forward to sharing many more Grizz Days with you in the years to come as we give praise to the Grizz for the bounty of powder snow that we all get to enjoy each winter here in the Elk Valley.